Under the guise of emergency, Palestinians in the West Bank and Jerusalem have been stripped of the very few rights they had left. Since the October 7th attacks on Israel, Palestinians living under Israeli control have been subjected to indiscriminate arrests, arbitrary raids, mob beatings, and the extrajudicial confiscation of their homes, while Palestinians in Gaza have withstood constant military bombardment. Inside Israeli-controlled territory, Jewish citizens enjoy unchecked privilege, regardless of whether they live over the Green Line or inside the 1948 boundaries. But since October 7th, the tiny minority of Jewish Israelis who dare disagree with their government's openly apartheidist policies towards Palestinians have found that they too live under a two-tiered system of justice. Now, only the Israeli Jews who support the efforts of Israel's military to erase and occupy Gaza enjoy the full privileges granted to them under their country's supposed democracy. Simple non-violent displays of solidarity with Palestinians, or posts or reposts on social media, criticizing Israel's military operation, can lead to long-lasting military detentions, beatings, or harsh social consequences. While I was in Israel, on November 9th, Israeli police arrested, detained, and raided the house of Israeli Jew and high school teacher, Mayor Brukin. The police also kept him in solitary confinement for the wrong think of showing simple compassion for Palestinians in Gaza. Joseph Zernick is an Israeli court observer and human rights activist. He's been researching and reporting on the legal predicament of Brukin. I caught up with him in a village in the West Bank's Jordan Valley. He was uh, detained uh, for uh, Facebook posts, which uh, the police uh, alleged in uh, his detention hearing were incitement uh, for uh, uh, violence. And also they claimed that it was uh, suspected of uh, violating Article 100 of the Israeli Penal Code. Article 100 uh, talks about a person who reveals a decision to betray. The uh, pu violations are pub punishable by uh, life imprisonment or the death penalty. And what were the Facebook posts? So it could go like this. Uh, Muhammad was 14 years old. He was a very good soccer player and his life dream was to become a professional soccer player. He will never become a professional soccer player because uh, on this and that day he was killed by our exceptional boys. Making an example out of Barukin, the authorities put the high school teacher in front of a judge and requested to extend his military detention. This was all done behind closed doors, but Barukin's case is not exceptional. All courts in Israel, because of the war, are now operating in secret. And the decree declaring all court hearings secret was also issued in secret. Part of what I do is I go to the courts uh, in various cases to observe the courts. In the U.S., that uh, function of the public as uh, court observers uh, is... Uh, I think well known as a part of your civic uh, duties or uh, civic activity. Anyway, I, I, I arrived to the Jerusalem Magistrate Court and I tried to walk in and I was told you cannot walk in. I asked uh, why and they said because the courts operate now under emergency regulations and all cases uh, are uh, handled under closed doors and you will be able to enter a court hearing in any case only pursuant to a judicial decision. Closing the doors in all courts in all cases is considered a hallmark of a dictatorship. It was not in the public uh, published uh, decree of the Minister of Justice. I filed as usual a freedom of information uh, request with the administration of courts Again, asking to know who issued uh, the decision to run all courts in all cases behind closed doors. 
And finally, uh, they answer me, which is the typical answer. Uh, we uh, refuse to provide the information because if we provide the information, it will lead to undermining the work of the courts and, uh, and it will be breach of uh, information security and so forth. A handful of older aged Jewish Israelis gathered across the street from the courthouse to see if Mayor Barukin's militarized political detention would in fact be extended. I saw on the other side of the sidewalk, of the street, on the other sidewalk, there were, I think, about five 50, 60, 70 year old men standing. So I walked across the street, walked to them, and I said, and they said to me, so you tried to get into court and they didn't let you? I said, yes. So I thought maybe I'll stay and I will be able to hear from the attorney what transpired and uh, report it. I often even report from inside the hearings uh, on Twitter. And then several police cars appeared and a police force of about 20 or 30 people. And uh, they announced on the loudspeaker of the one of the police cars something i couldn't even understand it because the quality of the sound was very poor but uh, i understood that they wanted us to mm, uh, disappear so we started moving away and then uh, these uh, 20 30 police uh, started beating us up for no reason at all Danny Daniela is one of the older Israeli Jews who was at the courthouse standing in solidarity with Barukin. I interviewed him outside the Knesset building where families of the October 7th hostages were protesting the government's war efforts in Gaza. They felt left out in the cold by a government that promised them months ago that getting the hostages back was a priority. To say it in one sentence, they came in order to beat us. Uh, I didn't see such cruelty, uh, such violence from the side of uh, Jerusalem police in terms of, you know, chasing, eating, not hesitating uh, to uh, beat uh, adults, I would say even old ladies. And people were cursed. I mean, the policemen didn't hesitate to curse people uh, in uh, sentences like, go to Gaza, uh, go to uh, East Jerusalem, go to Sheikh Jarrah, uh, uh, you are, uh, we don't you, we want you. You are lousy leftists. This kind of stuff, they, they didn't hesitate <laughs> as, uh, as people of the law to curse citizens and we did nothing. For me, it was a fascist uh, 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 event, really. Uh, coming and uh, doing these horrible things to uh, law, uh, the, the people who, re who respect the law, uh, uh, who, who did nothing. <laughs> Ofer Leibowitz is an Israeli Jew and was attacked at Barugan's detention hearing by the fanatic Special Forces police officers. And I didn't even have time to think. It simply, one policeman came over and grabbed my sign, and I tried to take it away. And then came this other policeman, actually the first one that, that told me to go away, and he pushed me badly, and I fell like a few meters from there on the ground, and I had no sign. I had nothing. I was, and, and I managed to, to sit up. And he came back with his bat and hit me twice. Then my ribs still hurt. I, 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 I don't think I have a, a broken rib, but still, I mean, when I'm lying down, mm -hmm. getting up, it's painful. And it didn't matter to the police that some of the older Israeli Jews they were beating and humiliating were military veterans themselves and fathers and grandfathers to current Israeli military soldiers. I was attacked in Jerusalem, and my son, Nadav, serves in the army very near the northern border. I mean, to, to, <laughs> to treat me as a Yom Kippur war veteran, 
and the first Lebanese war veteran. As a traitor, as a person uh, whom you have to attack, uh, whom you have to curse uh, or mock, is, is impossible by, uh, by uh, shouting or uh, saying different things that uh, are not, uh, you know, on, in the national consensus, uh, you reveal yourself as a, as a traitor. Mayor Barukin was eventually released from military detainment, but still faces charges from the state of Israel. He was also illegally fired from his job. But on January 19th, the Tel Aviv Regional Labor Court reversed Barukin's termination. Barukin told Haaretz that the ruling is a bright spot in the dark place that we have been in recent months, where Israeli citizens who express opposition to what is happening in Gaza are politically persecuted, publicly condemned, lose their livelihoods, and in some cases are thrown into detention. Upon returning to teach his 10th grade history class, he found that students not only refused to attend his class, but they organized a demonstration against him. His own students, the next generation of Israeli society, cursed and spit on him. <laughs> Some Jewish Israelis do in fact manage to show solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza or criticize the Israeli military without being detained or arrested, but even still, they face brutal social consequences. Yael Ayalan was the principal of Tel Aviv's Ironi Yod Daled High School. After posting on Facebook about the lack of Israeli media coverage on the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, her students led a fanatic mob attack against her on school grounds. They screamed, demanding she go home, and even threw trash at her. Ayalan was suspended from her principal position at the high school and, according to Haaretz, forced to the municipality where she was asked, presumably by government officials or police, to undergo a so-called educational process. On the other side of Jerusalem is occupied East Jerusalem. The Palestinian neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah has a known life without occupation since 1967. Ahmed Muna is a Palestinian who owns a bookshop in East Jerusalem with his family. The crackdown on freedom of expression happening since October 7th to Jews in Israel has been happening to Palestinians like Ahmed and his family since the state of Israel was created. The, the state has got to a point now where, where it basically does not want anybody to criticize it. You can't criticize the state of Israel. You're Jewish, you're not Jewish, you're Palestinian, you're not Palestinian. It doesn't matter. It, it, it really got... It got to that stage where we really don't care, and and it, I mean it says a lot about this country. It says a lot about the uh, the what this country brags uh, about that it, it is a democracy. Uh, you know, a democratic state will not arrest its own citizens for criticizing it. One of the main pillars of being a democratic state is having a freedom of speech, is having a space for people to criticize and change. I mean, this is what democracy is all about, you know. But yeah, basically, the state of Israel is not interested in in this. I would call what I would think they would call nonsense. And who doesn't support that, that we can have an authority of, over? We're going to put in jail. This is how the country is operating now. <laughs>